The Red Dirt D&D Podcast is brought to you by Pro Laser Cuts. The Oklahoma company provides pre-made and customizable design laser cut dice towers, tokens, and more developed by a gamer for gamers and now available to enhance your tabletop game. Pro Laser Cuts products can be found at many Oklahoma City area game stores, local events, and now available online at ProLaserCuts.com. That's laser and cuts with a Z, Pro Laser Cuts. And by SD Way Gaming, where dice goblins unite. Our friends at SD Way Gaming celebrate the beautiful dice players handpick for their games and splendor. SD Way Gaming has expanded to include many tabletop gaming varieties, accessories, and similar fun necessities to include a service for your dice addiction. You can shop for a variety of products at sdwaygaming.com or find SD Way Gaming on Facebook. Welcome to Red Dirt d and I'm Michael Cross, and I play Blackjack, a Jackalope folk warlock. I'm Connor Schnold. I play Jessica, the Coyote Shifter Ranger. Hi, I'm Kiri. I play Billy, a Possum Fighter. I'm Brooke Bullock. I play Zianzi, a Spiderkin Cleric. I'm Johnny Payne, and I play Twitch Grimfoot, a Rat Folk Necromancer. I'm Kim Cross, and I play Beatrix, a Tabaxi Rogue. And Aiden Cross, as your Dungeon Master, Join us for Tales from the Iron Woods. I do have a tale. You're welcome. The Iron Woods is calm, unaware of what is happening above the surface of the planet. The mansion that they had saw previously looks barren, desolate. Everything is silent and the leaves move in the wind. There's a faint storm coming, but probably will not arrive until morning. As the silence continues, maybe a few birds chirping, you hear the sound of magic from inside the mansion, almost building up. And as it does, it gets louder and louder and louder as all of a sudden, Three waves, one after the other, of magical energy burst forth from the mansion, heading towards the atmosphere of the planet and towards where our current conflict is happening. The ships have left the much bigger ship. You all are on your way back to the planet with everyone, the main party being in one ship. Meanwhile, Ares, Pumpkin, and the humans, the goblins, the fairies all in the other ship. As you are making your way, you realize that even though that there's still a little bit of battle going on, there's still some conflict, it just sort of died down as this wreckage and this rubble just kind of floats there. Anything you guys would like to do? So we're heading down in our ship. Mm-hmm. And do we see this going on with the mansion? You do not. I figure we've got the way into the mansion, right? Well, we got the key. We just need to get through all of the fighting going on and start making our way back towards the Ironwoods, towards that mansion. And we got Pumpkin back, so I think we could help them return to their master. Yes, and it seems like the battle, even though that is still happening and there's people still fighting, no one's really paying you any attention because they're so caught up in their own conflict that is happening. Clearly, they are more focused on their own battle rather than worrying about you all escaping. Jessica, we're going to have to talk about that that key when we get down there. <laughs> we're gonna, you and I are going to have a conversation about that. <laughs> Uh, okay, t- t- uh, are you all right? Are you all right? I, I'm wrong? fine. Perception check on Twitch. 17. Does he look healthy? Is he bleeding anywhere? So looking at Twitch, he kind of looks tired, sickly, kind of gray right now. Maybe worn out, but you can't quite tell. Zianzi remembers whenever he killed the dragon, the energy that killed the dragon then seemed to like flow back on to Twitch a little bit. I whispered to Blackjack, when Twitch killed the dragon, he noticed that wave of energy that flowed back toward him. Right, something came out of the right. dragon, Is like an normal? essence or a, a life force. Seems to come from him. Is that normal? Do you have any type of arcane knowledge about well, that? Some creatures are able to, once they kill something, take their life force and add it to their own and make them stronger. But I've never seen it in any other creature. Maybe because we know that he dabbles in 
death magic, the necromancy of the world. Maybe he's got some way to, I don't know, pull the power of someone's life into themselves. Give me a medicine check real quick. Oh, okay. Natural one! He's oh fine. my god. He's fine. He's fine. Yeah. I can't tell with all the robes and the things and the Looking at him, coughing and the grim foot. It just kind of looks like he might just be feeling a bit sick. Maybe the adrenaline's kind of worn off um, from what's happened on the ship. Can Jaska do a medicine check? Yeah, maybe a medicine check. 16. It d- does appear to just be like kind of that adrenaline wearing off. After you realize, you, were, you kind of think back to the dragon fight, the first one, where he got breathed. He did not look the greatest after that. Almost looking like he was deathly, but the adrenaline kept him going somehow. Twitch, honey, why don't you sit down for a minute? You're looking a little bad. I'll sit down right here beside you. Okay. And he sits down in a normal way that you've seen him sit down before, like he's kind of hunkering down. And he always reaches into his bag and pulls out his book. And this time he doesn't reach into his bag and pull out his book. He just stares at the ground, at the deck. All of a sudden you see the weirdest thing coming at you from the planet. What appears to be this arcane energy, almost in a wave heading towards you. What would you like to do? I think we've got incoming. Is anyone else seeing that? All of you are seeing it. Give me our title check. Yeah. 12. It looks kind of similar to a spell that some of you might have. I'd say anyone that has spells, make me an iconic check. Yeah. I would say Twitch is probably feeling pretty tired, so he's yes. like trying to identify. Just... <sighs> I only got an 11. 11. See, once you got a 14. Jaska and Blackjack, you don't really recognize it. As for Yuziancy, it looks very similar to a certain spell known as Dispel Magic. Uh, that, that doesn't, um, is that like an anti-magic thing? Blackjack, is that, I think it's, it has the same coloration as Dispel Magic. Oh, oh, now I notice it. Yes, good eye, Zancy. Well, I normally see it coming off of your hands. And it's coming at us? Yep. What's well, making I think it I should fly? probably dive or magic. turn or do something magy with the hand. Right. Oh, Can buckle you up. Maneuver us past it. I'm this, going to try and steer this thing around it. At this point, it's almost right next to you. Give me a charisma saving throw. Uh, give Ares a charisma saving throw. It's a three. <laughs> oh, oh, no! So it comes up to 11. 17 for Ares. As you kind of try to duck below it, it turns at the ship and hits it as you lose control with the ship and you are just slowly drifting closer to the planet. Ares, you see another one coming as I need you to make me another Christmas saving throw. Okay. Only a 13 that time. This time it hits the ship that Ares is on. You all see this as it hits it. And all of a sudden you see kind of like the light from it. Any sort of arcane energy it's exuding is hit. You also see any of the ships that are remaining behind are also pretty much all hit by this arcane dispel magic as some of the ships just float there. But I would say you all are close enough to the atmosphere that you are slowly gaining more Mm. speed as you're heading closer to the planet. Meanwhile, Ares seemed to have taken a further turn across the planet as it seems to be pulling Ares along the planet's surface and not directly towards it. But we're going down. You are going down. All right, everyone, buckle up. This is about to get a little bumpy, I think. Can I try to just restart the engine? Give me an Arcana check. Oh my gosh, that's a three again. <laughs> oh <laughs> no! It's no more for that die. Can Ares try and start? Yeah, maybe Arcana check. Okay. 15. Looking at it, Ares, you can kind of tell that you are probably permanently out for now. Okay. As far as you can tell, Blackjack, this is so beyond your level of arcane yeah. knowledge that you do not know. Well, everybody, let's get into the captain's quarters and try and batten ourselves down. Mm-hmm. Can't think of anything else to do. Come on, Twitch, sitting out here is not safe. Come on, come inside the cabin. I'm coming. I'm trying to think of some way to protect everybody. Um, We're looking for so soft things. Jessica hurriedly grabs Twitch because he was looking a little worse for wear and shuffles him into the captain's quarters, gestures for everybody to get in. Does everybody go? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 100%. And as she does that, she whistles for her tumbleweeds and you see them all coalesce around us and their twigs grow and shape and form a dome shape around us. As you all are pepping and you can feel yourself, just the gravitational pull just pulling you closer so much faster unaware of where Ares' ship is and where Pumpkin is at the moment. As you can tell, you're kind of getting into the further atmosphere of the planet, pretty close to maybe hitting the ground. Jessica, you realize as the tumbleweeds are surrounding you, hoping that everything's gonna be all right, you see that the key 
is starting to glow a little bit and shimmer. She'll grab it and inspect it closer. And it's almost like the glow from it is getting brighter and brighter over time, as if something is charging up Mm -hmm. without you all doing anything. And around you appears, almost seem to have teleported, an orange tabby cat. The goblins also appear around you, as well as... Harry doesn't seem to be there, but it, it, maybe he's there and you just didn't see him. And as you all are preparing for impact, these teleport in, you see both the key and pumpkin start glowing again, and all of a sudden you all disappear from the ship and appear safely in the ironwoods on the ground. Where's the key? What? Where wow. are the ships? <laughs> as you it's all... It's okay, you get used to it. ...appear on the ground... Uh, the ironwood trees around you, you hear a giant crashing noise somewhere off in the distance. Woo! Well, that was exciting. Is Pumpkin still here? Mm-hmm. Pumpkin, Pumpkin, did you do that? Yeah, yeah. Ugh, you see he's very tired, very worn out. He says, I, I've never tried anything like that before. And I am very exhausted. Pumpkin, that was amazing. This is why you're my favorite cat. I am so excited to have you here because you might have just saved all our lives. We could have been in that crash over there. So before this gets said, Twitch is convinced that the key had something to do with it. So he's looking for the key. Did it stay firmly in Jaska's hand or did mm-hmm. Jaska drop it upon impact? It's still in Jaska's hand. Yeah. yeah. Is the tired from Pumpkin similar to the tired of Twitch? No. Okay. They are unrelated. Pumpkin, should we go straight to the house? Or do you feel like you need a rest first? Jaska, can you figure out a way maybe to get back to that cave? Yeah, I think we all deserve quite a bit of a rest after all of that. Or do you feel there's some sort of urgency for us to go to it now? I, I don't think there's any sort of urgency right now. I think we could probably all rest. Uh, you all look very t- Twitch, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> Let's see. I think we should all rest up and try to just relax for a little bit. I'll try and navigate us back to... Did we land in so you are, the you, forest in a place that it was familiar? You realize that this area is kind of closer to the mansion than to the cave. The cave is probably yeah. a mm. few days away. So I'm Ooh. thinking maybe instead of trying to find the cave, we try to find Ted. This looks about where he was, yeah. Maybe cave way over there, and everybody looks sick. And when I was sick, you know who made me feel better? Who? Ted the 17th. Ted, of course. All oh, right. Ted. Ted. He was a Sasquatch. Oh, oh Beatrix, you haven't met Ted yet. No. Oh. Very Ted, big. You know so many different. Very furry. He lives in a giant mushroom. Like a bear, but Oh. Not. A <laughs> giant very large. mushroom. Yep. Interesting. Yes, okay. he's a very large, hairy man. So hopefully he did not get crushed by the ships. <laughs> oh, that would be tragic. Oh, oh, do you think there are any more that might be falling? And Zianzi looks up <laughs> through um, the trees. Maybe a perception check. Oh, no. Well, <laughs> 17 total. You only see one other ship, and as you're looking around, you actually realize Ares, although his bag is here, is not here himself. And oh. as you look up, you see not falling towards the atmosphere, but going along the atmosphere and using the gravitational pull to like pull it along and around the planet is what you can assume was Ares' ship. Pumpkin, I think you missed one. As I watch it arc across the trees. (laughs) Oh, oh, Ares. And you see Pumpkin sort of frown a little bit. I guess I couldn't get everyone. Aiden, as Dungeon Master, I know that Pumpkin can get out of the woods because he is fae. Mm -hmm. The fairies are fairies. Mm-hmm. Can the fairies get out of the woods? I say so. Latin and fellow autumn fairies, I am putting you in charge. I am king of mudmen. And um, I am putting you in charge of these 11 humans. Please escort them to the nearest exit. Humans will regrow back, actually, as they kind of, as they kind of get back. Oh, that Wonderful. was all very weird. <laughs> okay, humans, we have this backpack that needs to be returned to fellow humans. Oh, you think we know each other, all of us, the same? Well, <laughs> we got other stuff to do in the Ironwoods, and y'all seem like y'all just want to have nothing to deal with this, which is totally understandable. That's true. So, if you would return this to uh, the Sideburns family, the Sideburns family, they're gonna really miss their husband and father. And father, his name was Colton. Colton Sideburn. Yeah. Okay. 
And if you don't find them, at least we tried. We normally would um, put pumpkin on exiting Ironwood's duty, but we need him with us. So I'm confident in you, Leighton, and I feel like your parents will be very proud of you. So you should do it. The other groups that have you've saved will thank you for saving them from up there. Whatever that was. Uh, <laughs> they owe you one. Unfortunately, you now have something to tell your grandchildren. The groups go their separate ways. The fairies lead the humans back out of the woods. The goblins go back to their place. And you all are just left with you guys and Pumpkin. Jessica, so you think you might be able to find a way to get us back to Ted's? I believe so. This place is starting to look more and more familiar as I look around. Give me survival. And I want to give guidance to that. Okay. Yep, give yourself a D4. 13. I'll show you that you're able to guide okay. pretty easily. That's it. This is as deep in the woods where it was kind of hard to navigate. Still kind of on that edge where it's kind of pretty easy. And this is familiar to you, so mm -hmm. let's see with a 13 you can get through. And eventually he finds the clearing in the woods where that mushroom hut is. And funny enough, right next to that mushroom hut is that ship that you all came in on. <laughs> right in the dirt, the back half of it sticking out of the ground. Mm -hmm. Almost missing the hut. Uh, <laughs> that was very close. Oh. Uh, do uh, mistletoe, uh, blueberry, and raspberry come rolling out of it? And they come rolling over to you. You put out the fire on any of them. Ted, Ted, are you in there? Stepping out of the hut, you hear a roar once again from this giant creature. He goes, <clears throat> uh, sorry about that. Oh, friends, hello. Ted, it's good to see you again. By the way, what happened with this ship here? <laughs> How did I this get here? I don't remember parking that there. <laughs> <laughs> did you have quite a interesting night last night? I was dead asleep. Apparently, because somebody <laughs> crashed a ship into your yard. Oh, I see that. One of you is looking kind of gray. Come inside, come inside. Yes, and yeah. also we want you to meet Beatrix. It's a brand new friend of ours. I've heard wonderful things about you recently. I'm Beatrix. Hello. I'm Ted, the 17th. And what does Beatrix see in Ted again? Like, what, what does he look like? Big, furry creature. He has gigantic feet. Double the size of Billy. Billy's head <laughs> and Billy in general. Huh? Uh, Billy is only 18 inches tall. Yes. Yeah. And just this gigantic, furry humanoid. And probably about, I think I said he was like about 12 feet tall. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. You are something. I'm glad Thank to meet you. you. I'm glad I'm glad to be something. So let's head on in and see if we can take care of Twitch. He doesn't seem to be doing very well. What are you talking about? <laughs> you look awful. <laughs> it's really the coffee. I'm fine. He pulls his cloak up around him, shivering. You all head in. You see Ted sort of go through some of his cabinets in the hut, trying to search for some elixirs and some various powders and such. You see him grab up this white powder, crushes it up, and says, all right, Twitch, this might be able to help. Before Twitch reaches out for it, he pulls a rag out of his pouch and covers his mouth and starts coughing very hard. And he stops for a minute and looks around at everybody, still with his hand over his mouth and this rag. And he looks at everyone sort of in shock. And he turns to profile a little bit and pulls the rag out. And whoever's standing close to him might see a little bit of blood and a tooth. Greetings and salutations, my friends. I'm Michael Cross. So great to have a moment to talk with you during this mid-show break. First off, I want to invite you all to join us as Patreon members. The money we raise helps us pay for things like music and sound effects you hear on the show, as well as money to go to events and make new fans. When you become a Patreon member, you get our episodes four days early, bonus content, access to our Discord server, and full versions of our roundtable discussions. You'll be joining other fans like Scott Wise, Don Mills, Heath Mormon, and the Lady Kate. So join us right now at patreon.com slash reddirtdnd. Another way to support us is by getting your very own Red Dirt merchandise. You can find things like hats, hoodies, mugs, and t-shirts. Just click on the merch tab at reddirtdnd.com or reddirtrpg.com. Since 2020, the Red Dirt D&D podcast has been close to another Oklahoma actual play Dungeons & Dragons podcast, D20 to Curtain. And me personally, I've had a chance to work on stage with some of the actors on the show. So when you get done with this episode, you should check them out. 
Hello, fellow D&Ders. My name is Jerome. I'm Jennifer. I'm Jody. And together with our friends Kara, Timothy, and Jared, we are the cast of the D20 to Curtain podcast, where Oklahoma theater geeks and their friends hit record and explore our new addiction to Dungeons & Dragons. We think D&D is more than just a game. It helps us tap into the enduring power of storytelling. We combine live gameplay with behind-the-curtain episodes to share our experiences, insights, habits, discoveries, and passion for D&D with anyone who will listen. We hope D20 to Curtain will make you laugh, cry, maybe even make your experience at your table even more satisfying. Check us out anywhere you listen to podcasts or visit us at d 20 tocurtaincom or at d 20 tocurtain on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We look forward to having you. All we ask is that you have fun, be kind, and play the role. If you're looking for more content, make sure to check out our YouTube page with Mysteries of Beatrix live every Wednesday. Keys from the Golden Vault from the Red Dirt Outlaws dropping every Tuesday at noon and Plausible Deniability every other Thursday at 7 p.m. So come check it out at youtube.com slash at Red Dirt RPG or search for Red Dirt RPG on YouTube. And we would love to hear from you. Find us on social media at Red Dirt RPG. You can also get in touch with us through our website at reddirtrpg.com. In the meantime, make sure and subscribe to this podcast and leave a comment on your favorite podcatcher so others can find us. All right, I think that's everything I need to tell you. Right now, let's head back to Red Dirt D&D. Something strange has just happened. The party has made it to Ted's hut with Twitch, who is not looking the greatest, and Pumpkin, who is also very worn out. And as Ted was readying some sort of elixir or concoction to help Twitch, he started coughing up blood and maybe even looks like a tooth in there. Twitch, are you all right? You don't look so good and you, oh my God. Twitch has a tooth. tooth. Twitch is not all right. No, I'm fine. <laughs> Oh, here, come over and lay down. It's my nice moss bed. Is that okay, Mr. Ted? And, and take the yes, medicine uh, that uh, Ted gave you. Yes, uh, please, take, take the medicine. It should help at least a little bit. Wow. Twitch just stops and looks at all of you like, whoa, this is a feeling he's not familiar with. Not the sick part, but the, here, come lay down. I made you some warm tea. <sighs> he takes the tea and the drink and starts walking over towards the auntie's motioning. He smells the tea and drinks it back in one gulp and just keeps walking and hands the cup to Zianzi and sort of just collapses in the hay. Whoa! Are you conscious? He's locked out. Ted says, I've only seen similar things happen to people that are, well, let's just say, moving on. Did, did something happen? Billy would like to violate poor Twitch's pouch and look for the bullet. Mr. Black Dick! Can you identify if it is bad bullet? I can. I want to sit down for 10 minutes and cast identify. Um, uh, real fast, with the whole, did anything happen to him? When she brought him back, would there have been any, would she have like maybe looking back on it now, there was a bit of resistance? With my healing spirit? Bringing me oh. back maybe? Make me a history check with advantage since that you were the one who brought him back. Okay. 12. Yeah, now that you're thinking about it, it almost seemed like he almost didn't want to come back for a second or like almost like the body didn't want to, but it's almost like something was keeping him tethered to this place. Okay. With the healing and um, the hanger, right? Yeah, with the healing and the hanger fighting once, against the dragon. Uh, once Twitch collapses onto the hay, Jaska like immediately is pulling out her bedding stuff, placing a blanket on him, making sure that he's comfortable and she'll turn to the rest of the group. Well, I do remember when I used my healing spell on the ship. I didn't quite notice it at the time. I thought it was just, I'm not used to using that spell, and I thought that might have been what it is. But now that I'm thinking about it a little more, there seemed to be some type of resistance of bringing him back. You think it was the dragon? No, it was obviously Boston. Boston has done this. I don't know how, but he has. I don't know if it's Paulston or the dragon or maybe Twitch didn't want to come back. Oh. So I... Cast I, Identify? Cast, it takes a ritual, so it ritual takes 10, 10 minutes. minutes to cast it. 
So as you're casting it, you get this sense of almost necromancy magic coming from the bullet. And as you are identifying it, it seems to be keeping Twitch from fully dying, at least by the standards of any outward force. And the bullet appears to be making him sicker. I think the bullet might be some kind of necromantic magic. And for some reason, it's not only tethering Twitch to this plane, but it also is making him sicker. But what I'm worried the most about is the fact that it kept him here. I don't know if he should have survived that dragon fight. It, he did take the blast from the fire breath full on. Right. Oh, we all did, but I know that he's not quite as strong as some of us, so maybe this bullet kept him here and now is killing him. In the way that Paulson's tea tethered us to the gazebo when we right. were gone, do you think the same type of thing is here? Exactly. <gasps> because Paulson wants to kill him himself? It's some kind of revenge bullet. Oh, my. So, as that happens, Twitch, you wake up, not to the rest of you, but almost in this sort of weird dreamlike state and you hear a familiar voice say wake up twitch before i wake up do i notice the taste of that tonic in my mouth before i open my eyes mm -hmm. everything seems dead cold almost like oh i'll open my eyes up who's there just an old friend twitch and you hear what sounds like the loading of a revolver twitch will start f slowly feeling around before he jumps up does he have any of his stuff with him? I'd say yeah, you have your stuff. Are you gonna get up? And he oh. pushes himself up, yes. yes. You push yourself up and you realize your body is still there on the floor. You see the images almost kind of wispy of your friends moving about, kind of a little bit frantically as they appear to all be over your body, watching it, maybe even crying maybe a little bit, a little bit worried, worried on their face. And what you see appears to be this image of a porcupine on the other side of the room with the revolver pointed right at you. And he says, I want so much revenge for what happened. You were my revenge. You're not here. Am I, am I dreaming? Something like that. My friend said they met you. How is that possible? Let's just say that there's a certain creature messing with magic in these woods and is keeping souls here. And somehow I found my way. Twitch is torn and conflicted. He's standing here facing a victim of his. It was unintentional, but also, it's like he regrets doing it, but he's not sorry it happened. There's such a conflict going on in him right now. Well, what are you gonna do with that? You already gave me the bullet. I have it right here. I feel for the bullet. It's not there. I have one shot, one opportunity to end this, to end my little feud and my revenge on you. What do you say? But then what will you do? A hey, persuasion check. 15. You see him look to you for a second, and you see the gun start to lower a little bit and then raises it back up. I'll, I'll, I'll finally move on. I'll finally be able to move on. He scans the room, looking for a shadow to try to start casting his summon shadow spawn, and he sees the images of his friends, and he was secretly reaching into a pouch to grab one of the components, and he lets the component go and turns back to Paulston and says, you could just move on. You helped my friends before, and it was a good thing that you did. I can't explain to you how helpful it was, but you did a very good thing. And what I can explain to you is the feeling you're going to have after you get your revenge. And it's empty, because you were my revenge. You can't just let go. You see the gun fully lower. You see the hand shaking, and he drops the revolver. He says, promise me one thing, just one thing. Promise to protect your friends and don't forget what you did to me. And he starts to turn again, looking at all of his friends, the, Im the shimmering image of them on the other side. He turns back to Paulston, looks down at the revolver and says, I'll also make this promise that I'll take my own advice and just let go and move on. And you see the vision of Paulston nod and he slowly fades as you return slowly back to consciousness. And you all see that the eyes on Twitch are slowly opening once again. Still looking very tired, still looking very sickly, but looking a little better. Maybe a light in his eye. Twitch, you're looking a little better, but keep resting. Don't worry about it. We're in no hurry. Are you okay? How I feel? You feel better, mm -hmm. but you still feel weak a little bit. I think that he helped a little. 
Johnny can't remember, did you finish the ritual? Was the bullet visible? You probably have it in your hand. Okay, yeah. Casting identify on it, probably holding it. Yeah, so I say, this bullet, I did identify it, and apparently it was some kind of a revenge bullet that Paulston had tried to kill you with it. In fact, it might have actually saved your life against the dragon to keep you tethered to this prime material plane. So he was keeping me from dying while he was killing me. Right. As you're looking at it, the name of Twitch fades away and a new word appears and it says, remember. Twitch, I think Polston's sending you a message and I think this bullet belongs to you. You didn't do that, Pychak? That was not me. I think it might have been his and it's yours now. I'm gonna look over to the part of the room where Polston was standing. Anything, any, is, is it? It's just empty. During the brief moment of that was a weird dream, while Blackjack is talking, he pushes himself up, extends his hand and takes the bullet and rolls it around between his fingers before he finally focuses on it and turns it to the word. And then, like before, he clasps it in his hand and puts it in his pocket and then just looks up at each one of you again with a look like never really seen this look on his face before. And he suddenly gets a look of shock and says, hey, we've got to get you two home. <laughs> Do you have any more of that? <laughs> uh, yes, I, I have a little bit more. Um, maybe th- more of this would help. And he seems to pull out a red elixir, kind of mix it in the tea and kind of give it to you. Mm-hmm. Be careful, because the last one knocked you plumb out. I- I think I'll be fine. Pack some up for the road. No, Twitch, no. You need to rest. Your friends are here. We are here with you. Don't worry about it. We will take care of you. You can rest. There is time. You need to get your full strength. We don't know what we're going to face. We need our wizard, our friend, with us. We're more concerned about you, Twitch, than getting them home. We can do that at any moment. And honestly, I've really been trying to get that day off. Stay back, Twitch. He, he drinks half the cup and, and sits it down. And he sees the bedding that's been made for him. Mr. Twitch and Billy Waddles, he says, I have saved your tooth for you. I don't know if you could put it back, but if you can't, you can put it under your pillow. And then maybe you'll get the gold piece in return. Billy, I'm really sleepy. How long am I going to be here when I wake up? Twitch, we're not going anywhere. We've also Mm -hmm. got to get our rest as well. We need to recover, but more importantly, we need you as you are. We care for you, Twitch. You're our friend. He looks from you to Jaska as he slowly sinks into the cushioning of this bedding and mumbles something about a key and closes his eyes and goes to sleep. And Beatrix is going to walk over and sit down on the floor next to the bed and just put her paw hand up on, like I, on Twitch cat, and just going to kind of... That's exactly what Beatrix is going to do. Just going to sit the there with a hand. Mm. It's fine. Now, I think we should all take a rest. Everybody's I'd napping. Say Ted, Ted I looks at you all and says, it. yes, rest here as long as, you, as long as you want. You see Pumpkin's already like dead asleep on the table. Ted, have you noticed anything unusual about what's going on here? We saw something weird going on with the house. Yes, I'm not really much of the perceptive type, but there is something strange going on in these woods. You've already known that. Do you all have a solution to that? Well, we've got the key. Fortunately, Jaska was very brave and got the key for us. So you're going to go into that mansion? We've got to. I do have a question for the rest of us, because we think there might be a way inside the house for Zionsi and I to return to the Feywild. Yeah. One thing we've been looking for since the beginning. Right. But what about the rest of you? Do you stay here? Or do you go with us? Well, funny story. You remember when I went through the barrier when we were on the other side? Right. Very scary place. Well, I I actually grabbed the key. Right. You were standing there by it for a long time. Do y'all remember what we were talking about before that happened? Oh, well, uh, we were all talking about different wants and dreams and hopes and stuff. Well, you know how I was talking about how my main reason for being out here in the first place was to find Gideon, to hope to get him to be my mentor. Oh, so you oh, might yes. stay here to keep looking for him. Well, that was my original thing, if you guys had asked me earlier. But see, on the other side, I met Gideon. What? And I think he's dead.
Red Dirt D&D, Tales from the Ironwoods, is Aiden Cross as our showrunner and dungeon master, Johnny Payne as Twitch, Kiri Hester as Billy, Connor Chenold as Jaska, Kim Cross as Beatrix, Brooke Bullock as Ziancy, and I'm Michael Cross as Blackjack. Our theme music was created by the cinemagician PJ Castillo. Our incidental music comes from Jeffrey McBride. Our sound effects and additional music, courtesy of Monument Studios, Sirenscape, Describe.com, and TabletopAudio.com. Dice for the Red Dirt D&D cast, provided by SD Way Gaming. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and at RedDirtDnd.com. If you enjoy the new campaign of Red Dirt D&D, make sure to subscribe, rate us, and leave a comment. Also, tell your friends about Red Dirt D&D. You can also support the show at patreon.com slash reddirtdnd at whatever giving level works best for you. Join us next time as we travel farther into the Ironwoods. I think we've got incoming. Is anyone else seeing that? All of you are seeing it. Duck? Uh, Duck? <laughs> Ghost! <laughs> My favorite game! Much better than Where is Waldo? Can Jaska command her tumbleweeds to encircle everybody like Groot? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we are mistletoe! <laughs> no Dude. mistletoe, you'll die! <laughs> <laughs> Aries, and you see Pumpkin sort of frown a little bit. I guess I couldn't get everyone. It's okay. It's I'm right. sure he's got his own adventures to he'll go either, to. He'll either burn up in the atmosphere or crash land in water deep. <laughs> Luskin. Or somewhere on the sword coast. <laughs> or somewhere on the sword coast. Probably. So it's I've always heard. the sword coast. It's always the sword coast. <laughs> it's the only place that's really developed. And if you don't find them, at least we tried. <laughs> It's all it's the thought that counts. Colton exactly. will not know. <laughs> so that wraps up that side quest. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's Check. coming together. Good play, good play. That's um, what so we uh, have to do. <laughs> <laughs> we got this backpack. I'm confident in you, Leighton, and I feel like your parents will be very proud of you, so you should do it. And he tinkles. Right there. It just tinkles right there. <laughs> Scary, scary, almost it's, crash. It's, it's, it's a tingle of understanding. <laughs> <laughs> the other groups that have you've saved will thank you for saving them from up there. Whatever that was. Uh, <laughs> they owe you one. Fortunately, you now have something to tell your grandchildren. Remember, have your tinfoil hat on when you tell them about the aliens <laughs> that kidnapped you. <laughs> and you know it would be really funny if you tell them you were probed. <laughs> <laughs> Even think, though you weren't, it would be very funny. Right, Instead of kidnapped, just use the word abducted. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys, you guys weren't probed? <laughs> I was in the wrong cell. Mistletoe, uh, blueberry, and raspberry come rolling out of it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. Smoldering. Smoldering <laughs> and wobbly. Yeah, it seems, it seems Pumpkin accidentally left behind the tumbleweeds. Yeah. Pumpkin thought they were just plants. They didn't realize they were sentient. Somebody crashed a ship into your yard. I kind of like it, though. It's, 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 it's quite a statement it's, piece. It's, it's going to have lawn ornaments, lawn structures, <laughs> lawn sculptures. I'll start with the boat. <laughs> oh, They're um. all ship themed now. <laughs> he turns back to Paulston, looks down at the revolver, cacks a smile, and says, If I had a and pulls his wand out and kills him. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> and everything explodes. He looks at from you to Jaska as he slowly sinks into the cushioning of this bedding and closes his eyes and mumbles something about a key and how he's <laughs> held the spotlight in this episode too long. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he'd never fall asleep. <laughs> it felt like he was hogging the spotlight the entire episode. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs>
It's almost like he di- technically died in the last one, and we didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> we need a way to fix that. Or we, like that. So we, uh, we have a roundtable topic for you. Also, I ready to jump in and say this before, but I was just going along with this. So I'll, the the thing with Paulston mm-hmm. was that it was that a choice making opportunity, or was I supposed to talk my way out of getting shot and killed? Oh no! If no, if, if, I, had bucked, if I walked up to him and exposed my chest. <laughs> No, if you would not have convinced him, he would have shot you. You would have been dead. Okay. Oh. <laughs> that was your choice out of death right there. Wow. Do y'all remember what we were talking about before that happened? Oh, when uh, we were all talking about different wants and dreams and hopes and stuff. Yeah. Your backstory. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when we were doing exposition. That's <laughs> yeah. When we just filled an entire episode of just RP and we ran away from everything. Yeah, that was <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's the one. <laughs>